everyone this is TCP ASMR here in today's video I will be recapping season 2 of my West Ham at realistic career mode slash rebuild so first we will take a look at the standings for the Premier League Manchester City unsurprisingly won the Premier League by 14 points uh, we just s escaped eighth place which uh, if you watch the first season recap and the intro I cannot finish below eighth place um, or I have to do a forfeit which I asked you guys to suggest a forfeit in the comment section last video and a subscriber Jude Dillon uh, I believe was his name thank you Jude for suggesting he said if uh, I come after eighth or if I don't at least come eighth I have to sell my top player and my top youth prospect um, if I remember correctly so thank you again Jude for suggesting that so I think we'll, we, we will be going with that uh, but yeah we just got eighth place barely beating uh, Aston Villa or Newcastle for it um, one point ahead of them so and I don't know why I packed out I did that last video in the other competitions in the FA Cup, the winner was Tottenham, preventing City from doing the double. We made it to the, to the semifinals and lost to City 5-3 to three. Uh, in the round before we had a crazy game against Liverpool where we beat them 7-4. Um, from free 
let's see what you'll see in a second. And Vlasic is an 81. Okay. So, um, if we go look at the stats quickly for the entire league. So, Ocampo's at 29 goals. Wow. Um, Salah was four goals behind him with Holland equaling Salah's goal total and Gakpo uh, three points or three goals behind Holland and Salah and I'm guessing that's Gonzalo Ramos or Aston Villa who also had 22 goals uh, so it seems like also Lukaku is back playing for Chelsea and he actually performed he scored 19 goals uh, but the main thing that I want to focus on is Kamaka because that's our player. He came in the top 10, scoring 18 goals. Phil Foden came one goal behind him, which I don't think you will ever see in real life. Uh, Phil Foden scoring 17 goals in the league. Wow. For assist, Son led the league with 17. Holland with 15 came in second. And Paqueta came in third with 11. Uh, and Terrier came in 12th with 8, which he probably would have gotten a bit more had he played more games. Ariola came in seventh for clean sheets, and I believe that's pretty much it. Uh, and the FA Cup, Kane was the top scorer, and Ocampo's top assister. Uh, Kakare came in fourth. Uh, I'll get to it in a minute as well. In the Carabao Cup, um, see, Maximan was the top assister, and uh, is that Ollie McBurney? I think he came in first uh, for goals okay so let's look at the transfers we made and then we'll look at the entire squad stats and that'll pretty much be it for the recap okay so we bought Kakare for 35 million from Bournemouth um, he's originally from Lyon as you can see he's in his player profile picture he's still wearing the Lyon kit but we needed another center mid slash CDM, and he's, as you can see, his 84 stand tackle. So he's a pretty solid defender, as well as being able to move the ball. Um, and even though we technically bought him from Bournemouth in real life, he plays for Lyon, and of course, West Ham have bought players from Lyon before, mainly Paqueta. We sent Scarls Coventry on both on loan. We sold Soufal since he's our. He's 31. His pace is horrific. And we have Walker Peters and Ben Johnson. Uh, as I mentioned, we signed Bidstrup on a free because for some reason he was in the free agents. I'm pretty sure he has decent potential as well. Uh, also has a real face, which is nice. And yeah, he's just going to be a solid backup for now, but in the future, he could get pretty high. We bought Mitchell for $21.8 supposed to buy him last season but ran out of money uh, but this season of course uh, as you go on season by season in the top leagues they just start like boosting your budget uh, so he had like 220 million but I only spent about 60 of it I want to say uh, like 70 so sort of a realistic or somewhat realistic uh, budget especially with selling Zufal for 12 and a half which isn't a lot, but it's something to supplement um, our budget. So yeah, we bought Mitchell and Blaskakli, who we were also supposed to buy last season, but again, uh, just ran out of transfer funds. But we got him for 21.4 million. And those are all the transfers we made. If we look at the Youth Academy, I did call some players up, but this is what it's currently looking like. We have a couple of decent players, but I'm actually this guy should not be in here, although he does have five-star week, but um, I'm actually pretty happy with this because it's nothing too crazy to the point where it's like it's overly stacked, um, which I think is pretty realistic, so that's cool. And then for the stats, uh, similar to last video, I'm not going to read everyone's stats out, but I'll just highlight a few players. Uh, yeah, Aguirre scored three goals from center back impressive. Uh, Walker Peters played pretty well. Surprised he only got a 6.51 average rating uh, with getting 10 goals plus assist or 10 goal contributions. Suchek um, had 5 goal contributions. Not bad. Rodriguez actually had a, a decent 
decent amount of assists for a CDM. Uh, Kakare for only playing 28 games, seven goal contributions is pretty solid. Uh, Paqueta, pretty good season, 29 goal contributions in 52 games. Same with the Terrier, uh, 31 goal contributions in 50 games. Uh, before he got injured, Vlasic came mostly off the bench, so that's why he only had about four in 12. Um, Ings also came off the bench, but did score seven goals, five in 13 games in the Premier League, which is not bad at all. And then Skamaka had 26 goals and five assists overall, or 31 goal contributions in 48 games, which is pretty solid. So uh, I think the last thing we'll look at is objectives. Uh, I'm not doing too hot right now, but it's okay. I'll be able to... Uh, some of these and get my manager rating back up but some of these objectives just don't exactly align with uh, the realism that I'm trying to achieve like finish in a UEFA Champions League place okay yeah I want to finish or one of our goals is to finish top four but uh, I kind of saw that as happening later down the road once our team kind of develops same with the Europa League I mean we could win the Europa League after losing Rice, it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, and then same with the FA Cup. I mean, we got close, but, you know, to win the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, you have to beat the top teams, and we lost to City, which is always going to be tough to play City, but we did complete this one. So, anyways, uh, that is it for the Season 2 recap. Let me know if you guys are excited for Season 3. We did take a bit of a step back somewhat this year, finishing only 8th, but um, I'm optimistic about our squad going forward as some of our players uh, start to go up in overall, and we will be buying more players, of course, for the next season, uh, making some improvements. I'll probably try and get a backup goalkeeper, uh, a backup right mid slash right wing, because no one... There's no one to really back up Bowen right now, and maybe another striker, but um, I might just stick with Vlasic, but Vlasic isn't really a striker. I feel like he's more of a, a false nine. Uh, his main position in game is center forward, and he doesn't have a striker as one of his secondaries. So, um, I mean, that is what it is, but yeah, especially like some of our young players. So, uh, should be interesting for the next couple seasons. But yeah, if you guys are excited, again, let me know. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated if you do. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.